and Jimmy Bullis with more adventures on the road. Man, I'm excited about tonight. We've got the Canon, Shannon Dalton. Man, I've known him since uh, he was 12 and I would think I was 19. And uh, he's going to tell you the story about how we met here in a little bit. But, uh, you know, he's in the Hall of Fame for one pocket and he's won countless major tournaments. And uh, like I said, he, he was a child phenomenon. And, uh, you know, we got a lot in common. You know, we were talking earlier. We got enough stories to do a, a month of these every day. <laughs> and, and with Jimmy in the picture. I mean, it could be all year long. So anyway, I'm sure there's going to be a sequel, but but this first one I want to get going. Shannon, welcome to the show, brother. Glad to be here, man. How you guys doing? Oh, we're doing great. Great to see you, Jimmy. And then you two know each other real well. I uh, You said a, a comment earlier about, you know, Jimmy will keep you, uh, keep you laughing and, and keep you in stroke on the humor, huh? Well, me and Marge run pool tournaments for almost... 17 18 years and one of the main reasons i wanted to go to jimmy's place was just for the for the fun of it i mean it's unbelievable i mean <laughs> i don't even know where to start out there just from the time you walked in the door the time you left he was laughing either about the music or about people playing pool or about this guy done this or just something just you know he's kind of like me and you he's a lot of kind of full of shit so it makes it a lot of fun <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> So you're, you're from Somerset, uh, Kentucky, and that's where I first met you. I was with the uh, legendary Weldon Rogers. I've talked about him. Tell us from your perspective as, as a 12-year-old uh, what that was like when we came in. I mean, well, I remember looking at 39 years ago, CJ. So, but I mean, I kind of do remember it. I remember, you know, everybody, my dad had a target on his back and everybody in the world comes there upon him because he was a decent player himself like that. But, uh, I hate to say it, long story goes, a, a sucker, you know what I mean? So everybody had a target on him. And hell, at that time, I was probably more grown than most 12-year-olds were. And uh, uh, it was just a great experience. I mean, I remember Weldon coming in, and then you come in, you was his nephew and all of this, and you didn't hardly play pool, and then Weldon could play one-handed. And then it just, I mean, you guys come through, what, eight or ten times, I guess? Yeah, I, uh, you know, we told you guys we were on the road selling computers and I didn't even know how to turn a computer on. <laughs> so I told Weldon, I said, what if they start asking me about computers? He says, oh man, just wing it. <laughs> so, all you can do about like done here to that. I couldn't have done this right here without help of Marge's uh, son. Yeah. So uh, I really, you know, even when Shannon was 12, I couldn't be even playing one pocket, but, uh, but rotation was a little bit different. So, so Weldon gave me the instructions because at the time, his dad thought he played maybe a little bit better than Shannon, and he hadn't quite dawned on him. So, so I would get up and play Shannon and lose, and then I'd get up and play his dad, and we'd bet higher and win. <laughs> you remember that? And I we'd mean, go back and forth, and, and I think you beat me a set of one pocket. And, but we just kept going back and forth. And, and uh, his dad, it, it, you know, it didn't quite dawn on him that, that, that and, and it, I think it kind of aggravated him that, that Shannon was beating me and then he couldn't, he couldn't win. <laughs> so we were, we were kind of playing some ping pong there. And uh, well, at that time too, you know, you was, you was learning the road thing too from Weldon, which I mean, you had the, probably the greatest teacher of all time. So who else could anybody ever want to learn life on the road versus Weldon Rogers Jr. You know what I mean? Is uh there's never been a better hustler alive than him and maybe never a better one-handed player. I don't know if that for sure you've heard, you know, everybody talks about this guy played this way, this speed, and that speed, and Vernon the Elliott played the way he played and all of that. But I don't think we'll ever know because they never had to show the, ever their true speed. Yeah. 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 Weldon played great two-handed on the bar table too. I mean, he was, uh, you know, yeah, world-class player played right under Matlock from what I finally, had, you know, yeah. 20 years later. Yeah, and he, uh, you know, he would disguise his speed, and uh, you know, he was he was incredible, boy. I'm I'm telling you, I was really fortunate to get guys like that to run around with, and and uh, and you were seasoned really well too. I remember when you guys used to come down to uh, Dallas. Yeah, you remember going down to Dallas, and uh, yeah, I cut my teeth at Rusty's in Arlington, the toughest pool in the United States back then. I was about eleven or twelve years old, everything in there, but pimps and them not very nice girls and. Uh, 
certain other type of people there and stuff. At Rusty's in Arlington, but it was right there by Love Field before you opened the door. It was a tough place, but I didn't know it. And there stood Jack Cooney and John Hager and and even, I think, even maybe before you and Glenn and people like that. I mean, just a, a little owl from Dallas, Ruben, all the yeah. original hustlers from out there. I mean, it was Lizard. An incredible time. <laughs> incredible time the way that I grew up on Because I would just go out there, you know, once every three or four months with Dad when he went to the auction. Dad was going, truly going to the car auctions to go to yeah. work. And I would yeah. just go out there with him when I got a chance to get out of school. That's just the way it was. That's an awesome place to cut your teeth. I, I mean, I did too. I went down there when I was 16 and uh, went to the, the original Rusty's. And, and, uh, man, That's that what I'm talking awesome about. Right there. I don't remember the name of the road right there. The airplane was uh, Love Field. They used to fly right over the top of the, of the place. Or it had a strip club above us and beside of us. Yeah, that was Rusty's on the highway. Yeah, that was uh, a smaller one. It, it, there's two of them. The, the one in Arlington's still there. Yeah. But it was 24 hours, and it, it really the action didn't get going until after midnight. That was when everything started clicking. They're oh, yeah. playing three card money, and they're playing poker, and they're doing all. I mean, there's girls running around there from the Black streets. Larry. Remember him? He's the first yeah. one ever showed me three card money. Yeah, and Ben Tubbs and uh, Ben his, yep. his Shill. They had a Shill, uh, Bubba. They beat they beat uh, some. Uh, of the security guards outside, they they made the mistake of wandering in one night, and they got them in that three card money game, beat them out of twelve hundred. <laughs> I was like, oh my god! But, yeah. And they weren't much of a guard, boys. Huh? They weren't very much of a guard. No, they needed to guard themselves. <laughs> <laughs> it's like hey, Jimmy, I'm telling you, that was a tough Jimmy. That was as tough a pull as you ever seen in your lifetime, there, brother. Yeah, here I was twelve in there. That's right. Man, with them boob bars all around it, I don't know how anybody ever figured out how to make a spot shot. <laughs> don't boob I've never, I've never, had, I've never seen a boob there. The only one I ever seen was my mom's before that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, yeah, that was awesome. So uh, we were talking earlier, and uh, and and I mean, Shannon made the comment, and, it, and it's it's on the square that uh, Morristown, Tennessee. There was a guy named Frank Seals that lived there and uh, he had poker machines and he had a pool room. So I got him at another pool room because that was my instructions. Don't play him in his pool room. At Bill, Crawford, in Bill Crawford's pool room down down. Yeah. And I beat him out of 16,000. I give, ended up getting him like the five and a break or something. So he invites me over to his pool room and I That's had an RV at the time. He let me plug into his electricity, gave me a key to his place. And I mean, just like, I mean, I beat the man out 16,000. He treated me like I was a son. <laughs> you know, so. Same thing. I remember when I first met you, on the, not when I first met you, but right after that, not long, three or four years after you guys been through Somerset, you had your uh, motorhome plugged into Miss QB and Strength Seals' place in Morristown. Yeah. You stayed out there for a year and a half. Well, <laughs> not quite that long. Well, it was a, a while. Time. Three months or four months. Or so. I played all kinds of people. And you were coming down there and playing. and. Uh, I played Kim Davenport there and uh, Joey Barnes. Joey Barnes beat me there. I uh, might have had a, a few too many drinks that night, but he beat me. He was a great player. And uh, but uh, he was with you guys. What did you steer me into him somehow? Well, <laughs> if you remember, you, you played Joey. Dad had met Joey, and I guess Joey had robbed Dad in Dallas or something like that. And he's from Beaumont, if I'm not mistaken. Is that not right? Uh, he's from Beaumont, yeah, Beaumont, he's from Longview, East Longview, East. Longview, yeah, he's from Longview, Texas, yeah. And dad took a liking to him and brought him back there. And I run him around hell, I wasn't but 15, 16 years old. Then I run him around Kentucky and stuff. I try to make some money with him and stuff, send him in different spots. But you know, you had to be careful where you sent Joey, you know what I mean, at that yeah. time back in Kentucky. But we made decent money with him and stuff. And then we went, went to Morristown and uh. He played you, and then we, we made a set where he played you and I played you, and then somebody else played you. And Morristown was just constant action. That's all you can say about it. Man, that's there was first, people coming in. That's why I really reach. cut my teeth. That's the first place I ever played 500 a game at, and that was with Frank. Yeah. He'd make you gamble. And uh, Hell, it was a common bet back then in the middle 80s was 500 a game there. If you if you didn't bet a nickel, you couldn't – don't even talk to you about playing. That's right. Jack Cooney was hanging around there. Frisco Jack, you know, he's one of the best movers and shakers of the of the hustling world of know, all time. Did you ever Maybe play Jack any? Did you play Jack any or uh, 
Was no, he, I was uh, smart enough to stay away from that. Yeah, he uh, he was tough action to match up with. You know? Even at that age, I was smart enough to stay away from that. Yeah, I I, I stayed away from that crew as much, as well. They were they were too smart for me. It, one of the greatest things you can do as a hustler is admit when somebody's smarter than you are. And uh, there was a crew of them: Sammy yeah. Jones and yeah, uh, got Johnny Ross. Now there's a good one you just mentioned. He's got a business here in my hometown. Uh, he still runs Lori Jones here at right here in town and he had a hell of a comment about yeah i think he said something on this post he made a good comment a couple of nights ago about it but uh there's a good man right there he's turned into he's just a full-time christian plays golf every day he's almost 80 75 76 he looks like he's 50. Yeah. still plays golf five days a week and running the pool room i mean not the pool room but running uh, lori john's beer supply great business great person did you ever go up to detroit to the rack when those guys were up there, that was, there. Me, CJ. That was before your time, but you heard like this is early 70s. That was early 70s, right? They they won so much money on there, I won't even I won't even talk about it in uh probably still in RS safe. <laughs> I don't know what the statute of limitations is. Yeah. But they were betting higher than uh than anybody could imagine. I mean, it was it was back then the rack men made as much as some people make a salary today, what I heard. Yeah, they had free pool time. And yeah. I loved it because I could practice. Well, they, they had their 10% men and their 5% men. Mm. And if the big high rollers were 10% men, that meant you had to give the house 10%. Mm. So I got free pool, which was great. The first guy I played, I beat out of 18,000, had to pay 1,800 in pool time. <laughs> I was like, maybe this isn't quite as good as I thought. <laughs> you know? See, Joe, I just realized something. We got to answer some of these questions. I got all kinds of questions coming here. Yeah, we'll do there at the end. We'll, uh, we'll, uh, save it but uh yeah if anybody has any questions uh we can definitely do that pop on in guys we'll get to you here for a long yeah so uh so tell us you know after the morristown uh era of your life when you started cutting your teeth you know with the 500 hundred dollar gambling wh what happened after that well cj probably like a lot like you did i, I went out and tried to rob everybody in the country <laughs> And uh, got my fair share of scalps. And then you don't want you to do that for so long. Like you playing, uh, I think one of my, and he was just had a big feature of him on uh, uh, Minnesota television that, that he was featured. One of some of our last big money matches, I would think, would be against Jimmy Wetch. Yeah. Was, <laughs> one hell of a player, boy. I'm glad that yeah. one I played solid. They just had a big feature on him on, uh, I think it was called Minnesota Mornings or something just a couple of days ago. That he'd been in business like 30 years. Yeah. And, man, uh, Jimmy's got a nice place up there. I was up there. He makes like 50 different kinds of hamburgers and can yeah, that's called Jimmy's Pro Beers and Burgers. Yeah. Yeah. So you played Jimmy? Uh, I know you did a few times. I played him right after you played him at Dan Toll's place on Lake of Kansas. Me and him played the longest I ever played anybody in my life. We played 47 hours. Oh, really? That's a long And I played the tournament at Dan Toll's place in the middle of it and finished third. Is that right? No, I, I was with Burl out there at that time. I, I was probably, I was getting to my later years, probably about 25. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jimmy would make you, uh, I've told people back then, uh, you know, pool was not just like races to 11, like today where they play you one set and quit. If you were going to play somebody, you, play you, you had to beat them broke. into submission. <laughs> submission or broke. Well, that's when you, that's when you quit. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I, I was geared, you know, I wasn't really fast out of the gate, but I, I love playing those long sets. I mean, that's, that was. I really thought about it too, though I played him that time. That one there, like, actually, the only reason that thing broke up, that he and I finally quit if we didn't go back to playing, I come out one set winner the, on that playing. I think we was playing 10 or 15s ahead, whatever it was ridiculous back then. But, uh, at the end of the tournament, when I finished third, and I was me and Jimmy started back playing. There was a nurse standing on the sideline. Didn't have no idea who these people was and stuff like that. And she called me over to the side, and I was with Burl at the time. Yeah. And she said, "Young man, I don't know you, but she said you need to look at your legs." And I, again, I was in my mid twenties, and I had blood vessels that was bursting in my legs when it played so long and been up so long. Oh my gosh. And uh, finally, we just decided this to, you know, we probably had enough here. I, we quit when we was dead, even then. We done, I think we done played four of those big sets. 
Like I said, we played what at 47, 48 hours, longest I ever played anybody in my life. And I never played a set that long again. Immediately after that, I shut it down after that. That was too far, too long for me. Yeah, I played Jimmy the first time up there 27 hours, and then we quit for about 10 hours. We started playing again. I swear my bones hurt. And I got warmed up and we played 18 straight hours after that. So we I played don't it. Much, but it was in two settings. We had an intermission. Yeah. I can believe that. And Reed Pierce was, you know, him and Reed was like, you know, that was best friends. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, Reed was a warrior. Reed, Did you play Reed, Reed on the bar table or uh me and Reed never we never banged horns. It come close a lot of times, but he's you know, he was going through that transition. You remember back when uh, the, what's his name used to stake him? The big, big Brad. Remember that? And he used to say, I'm only a bar table player, but only a bar table player. He went through that for years. Where he tried to get everybody to come to Jackson and play. And then he finally came out. Everybody knew he was a good player. And then next thing you know, he went to the U.S. Open. Yeah. Me and I, gave him the, I tried to give him the seven ball twice, and uh, and and I lost. And then I I didn't feel near as bad when he won the U.S. Open <laughs> on big tables. Like and I said, beat I the, and beat Everton in the finals. The finals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a great player. We played several times over twenty hours, and, uh, and that phenomenal was phenomenal player. You know, yeah. again, I know we're talking about pool and stuff like that. I'm glad to see a guy do good, and I heard Reed done really, really, really well. Yeah. Um, with a restaurant, restaurant, and had like two pool tables in it, just done really good. Bill Wyndham said his place is ranked like the top 50 in the southern United States for a meet and three. I think they said they served over 2,000 plates per day at about $12. That's strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did well there in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, mm -hmm. I talked to him down. I was in New Orleans and talked to him on the phone a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I don't know if he's going to get back into pool or not. I'd like to see him maybe resurface. I, I'd like to interview him like this on a podcast because he's got plenty he's of stuff. Right. He's surfaced here lately. Did you see him with Don Mackey? I don't know how you feel about that. <laughs> yeah, that name. That? Yeah, that's like. Kevin uh, Mackey in Davenport. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, you know, you want to talk about some stories? Uh, some of those, I, don't think probably not long ago. I mean, you know, who knows? But and I don't, I hate to say this, but I never was a huge Don Mackey fan. Yeah, yeah, we had our uh, differences, but uh, that's all right, you know. We may clash again one of these days. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a little more seasoned now, though. <laughs> so, so, so Jimmy, old man sat uh, beside you ever going to say anything? Who's that old man sat beside you? Is he ever going to speak or just sit over yeah, or what? Can we turn the on button? Or did, I think he was on pause. <laughs> Jimmy, come on now. You're, Jimmy, you're the, you're tell us what, the show. What, what, when did you meet this young man here? Oh, Lord. Uh, well, I, he, I know he doesn't remember. The first time I ever seen him was in uh, Malden, South Carolina. You remember that, Shannon? Jimmy Hodges' pool room in Malden. Jimmy yeah. Hodges. That's exactly right. This was in the original pool room, though, not the – in, on Lawrence Road, I'm, I'm four exactly. and a half miles from there right now. It wasn't uh, it wasn't the new and improved expanded model. It was the uh, it was the old. <laughs> no, and, uh, that, was probably, that was probably 1988, 87, 88. You about 15, 16, something like that. Yeah. Didn't he? Did you win? Uh, what was the the tournament in Columbia or Charlotte or? Didn't Shannon? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, the one, one pocket. pocket. The Legends of One Pocket. How old were you when you won the Legends of One Pocket? My first 19? major win was a 91 Legends of One Pocket in Columbia, South Carolina that Grady put on. Yeah. Were you 19? Yeah. Man, who did you play in the finals there? I, you probably never heard of him. His name was Mizurak Mi, or something like that. Mizurak? <laughs> yeah, the guy. Miz? The mighty Miz is who it just is. Just when you're just showing off, Miz. Just showing off, yeah. <laughs> Man, what an awesome player! And Buddy Hall was there, and was Bugs there? Bugs. Bugs was there. I beat yeah, Bugs in my second one. Bugs. You know, you've played Bugs a few times. Now tell got, people about Bugs. My whole life, my whole life, Bugs Rucker's got the funniest saying ever been said about me in, in, in my in my career. I think we was playing at the. I don't remember which one it was. I, I won four of them, but we was playing at um, we was playing at Danny Bailey's place. You know Danny in Lexington, Kentucky. He just give you your cue. You was talking about on your last podcast. Yeah, I know him well. I'm playing him. Bugs the finals. The place is packed. It's my home court. You know what I mean? I'm Kentucky. Everybody in the world is rooting for me. 
and we 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 close, man. We're like three three going to five or something like that. And Bugs turned around. He shot this shot. He left me on the back rail, and I speared something. And just stupid enough to shoot at it, made it. He turned around. He looked at the crowd. He said, "Ooh, we." This young white man shoot at me like I'm an escape convict. <laughs> and when he said that, the place erupted, man. Then, that'll, go with, that'll go with me to my grave. All day. And it, it's all, actually, it's on Pat Fleming's Accustats. You can still get that. It's, it's Is that great. right? He said, ooh, wee. <laughs> this young white man shoot at me like I'm an escape convict. <laughs> Man, he was legendary. I used to watch him in Detroit. I wish I had more seasoning when I watched him because watching him bank balls was magical. Not only would he bank them at his pocket, but he'd sneak in behind those balls like like a foot off the rail and, and always be on the right side because he'd either hang it or make it. And if he made it, oh, yeah. it was like straight in on the next ball. And I was like, that's got to be luck. But he did it no. like time after time no. after time. When you know how to play bank, when you know how to really how to play bank, it's not luck. Yeah. No, I know now, but I, I, I wasn't, I was too, I was 19, you know, so I, I was too young to really uh, understand. And Bugs didn't even, Bugs' style was unorthodox and stuff too. You know what I mean? It didn't even look like he was, he just got down, throw down on the ball, nothing. You know, there wasn't no teaching back then playing pool. You grew up with natural talent. Either yeah. you had it or you didn't. I mean, he might have learned some from Cannonball or one of them guys from up north up in Red Shoes and stuff like that. I'm sure he had some teachers. Don't get me wrong. But, uh, just like you, CJ. I mean, you know, 90, 99% of our success come from uh, just natural talent. Yeah. Yeah, and then we refine it over the years, and uh, it's good to be around, you know, players and like you. Your brain's get out. you got to pay your dues. Yeah. You're gonna play pool. Man, I've told people this, and, uh, you know, there's, there's what you call knockers in pool that try to keep people from playing because they might lose. But I have had the best uh, increases in my game, not after winning, but after losing, because you get in a situation where you either raise your level or you'll be sleeping in the streets. Don't oh, you yeah. agree? Well, You've had, yeah. hundred you know? percent. I mean, I would have never been the player that I am right now if it hadn't been for guys like you and Weldon. And, I mean, I've been beat on my whole life. You know what I mean? Until I got what you just either get where you can beat them or you can get beat on. There ain't no happy middle to that. You get tired of getting beat on or you get where you can beat them. It's that simple. Very, yeah. That's just the way it is. Yeah. And I was very fortunate. You know, I'm going to go back to my dad again. God bless his soul. I wish he was still here to give him all the credit for the world for everything. But um, he gave me so many opportunities and my mom because mom done the sacrifices for it. But you know, hell, back then, we was going to Clyde Children's Tournaments. I think the first Clyde Children's Tournament in Richmond, Kentucky was 77 or 78. That means I was five to six years old. I think I played in the third one. Back then, they increased with $300. That was yeah. a lot of money back then. Yeah. And Dad put me in every one of them. And, this, you know, I had no chance to win. Couldn't ever win a match. But he gave me that chance to have that experience. That's awesome. And he, you know, I'd lose money in the pool room every weekend and stuff like that. And, you know, uh, uh, you got to have a chance. you got to have a start. And yeah. there's no way you're, anybody thinks you're going to ever be a world champion just by getting lessons and not getting what's called seasoned is dead wrong. Yeah. If you don't get shot at, you're, you know, you're not going to be a great good player. That's you got to pay your dues. That's what I mean. You know, people that do think they're doing somebody a favor by, by keeping them safe and not, losing a hundred or two or whatever. I think they're doing them a disservice, you know, and, uh, you know, that's just how I feel about it. And, and it stops the economy of, of the gambling world, which, uh, you know, of course we got, there's bad reputations and stuff like that, but overall, like I've told people, 90% of it's good. The 10%, Hey, that's in every profession. There's more gambling on the golf course than there is in the pool room. So I mean, oh my you know, God, but, but uh, it don't get discussed because of the, yeah. the nature the money, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know golf hustlers that made a fortune playing golf and playing gin inside and, you know, doing all that. I mean. If I'm guessing year, where you guys are sitting at, Jimmy, is that your two gold crowns right behind you? Yeah. The four-inch pockets. I'm going to say there have been 20 million bet on them two tables. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's a pretty good start right there. Let's go back to, a little bit to Jimmy. You got, you're sitting in one of the most famous poems, in my opinion, in the whole world. I mean, yeah. I I love speakeasy, man. It's a place in my heart. So let's talk about you a little bit, Jimmy. 
But let's talk about the first time you came here. You remember that? You no. and uh, you and some guy were, had been running around all over the damn Carolinas, and uh, y'all done done got all the damn money from everywhere. And y'all run into a little fat man here. Harold, you talk about Harold? Yes, sir. Harold Dollar. Who was who was the guy that uh, you didn't play the, your uh, your road you, your buddy played? It might have been Steve McKinnish. I'm not for sure who that was. What color hair did you have, Jimmy? I don't I don't remember, but I do remember you making the comment to me a year or two later that uh, you and him run around all over the place, and he beat everybody he teed up with, except Harold. I didn't travel with many many people, uh, but and especially good players. The only guy I think I ever traveled with back then that could beat me would have been Steve McCannish, and he was a hell of a player, man. CJ ever yeah. Steve. Yeah, I played him a few times in Toledo, Toledo right? Yeah, Toledo, Toledo there. From, yeah. I played him in his bar there, and uh, I ended up beating him, but it was a really tough match. It was called the RGN Nine ball. ball. It was called RGN Nightclub. You know what it stood for? Real uh, good Nine Ball. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember playing him on that first bar table as you go in, and uh, he man, was a, a shame, he was I've not talked to Steve in over 10 years now, probably, but I heard they had like six girls together. I started his house with him for months up there. He was running me around when I played people like Ricky Grace and all them guys up there in Michigan and stuff like that. But uh, I think his wife just died. They had six girls together, all in private schools. And I think he just lost his wife to cancer about a year and a year and a half ago. I heard that's just been terrible since then. Wow. Yeah, he's. He's if there's any chance guy. anybody hears that, just to talk to Steve McKenna's time, I love him to death and praying for him. Yeah. So, uh, somebody I don't asked. remember, Jimmy, exactly who that was. Had to be Steve McKenna. I come through there once, maybe with. Uh, God, who would that have been? I didn't travel with many good players. Uh, I was one of the first people who ever brought Richie Richardson down to the South. He right. He beat a lot of good people because people didn't. No, Richie just look. He still bridges over your thumb. Don't look like he beat nobody can and can really play. You know what I mean? Yeah, his fundamentals are. Uh, I, they all come together somehow, but it's unorthodox. He's the perfect, perfect road player ever of all times. Thumb bridge and jack stroke, and don't look like you can have a wet paper bag and will rob you if you ain't. If that's really good one by it. So really uh, good Earl, Earl, Earl beat that guy. Is is that the only person they played? Or uh, <laughs> yep. And then Harold was scared to death. He's going to show back up tomorrow, so he sent him to Myrtle Beach. <laughs> he didn't just send him to the next town over. He sent him to the next state over. Yeah, Harold. Harold what, wanted Harold. to protect those winnings. <laughs> Harold was a great player, man. Harold Dollar could play. Yeah. Yeah, he's legendary. You know, um, another place that, that we had some encounters uh, with some big action was uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and Flyboy and uh, Man Talk. Tell them about some of that gambling. I mean, the most money, I don't really want to disclose that, but the most money I ever won in my life was in that town. I bet on you. It was, I won over, it was over, I will admit this, it was under $9,900. That way the taxes, people don't get involved. It was <laughs> under $9,900. <laughs> I won $15 on the side. <laughs> uh, that is was that a place. Went, is that when you went down to Louisiana for like two weeks and stayed a year and a half? I stayed 18 months. I took enough clothes to stay 10 days. Mark Vitor called me. He said, you need to come down here. He said, this is a pretty special place. And I've done been hearing about it. I said, All right, I'm a coming. Bought me a plane ticket with a return to stay 10 days and stayed 18 months. <laughs> yeah. Man, that place was heaven down there. I mean, the, mo the money passing hands was, was just incredible. Uh, Amarillo still, Sam since this day, out. I've never seen nothing like it consistently. No. I know New Orleans is really good. New Orleans is a great. If a man wanted to go someplace to camp out, you need to go to New Orleans because and they're good people down there too. Yeah, and a lot of good friends down there. But uh, it's still not know. as much action as as Baton Rouge was. I mean, as far as no. as the quantity, uh, no. the quality is is as good or bigger sometimes, but. Uh, there was way more just road players coming in. Strong arm John Jimmy Wedge beat Flyboy out of sixty dollars or something, I think, and yeah. uh, it was pretty strong. But yeah. uh, sixty dollars went a long ways back. A then. guy went talking about James Walden won about one hundred and ten dollars <laughs> twice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. So uh, Shannon was, I mean, I, I, I was really, uh, it was cool. Cause every time I would get in action, I mean, Shannon would bet on me and uh, you know, that, that that's always an encouragement. I would the same. I mean, I bet on you when you play, you gave Flyboy the seven and the break on a bar table. That, that, was right. that, that no human would ever, ever do that. I was the first, I got lucky to win that little bit of money cause I was the first one to done it. Jose yeah. done it after me, but I was the one that broke the ice on that deal because, you know, I didn't even know really at that time. I was kind of naive, but I just didn't know. The hell, I guess, in the late 70s and early 80s, Flyboy played like damn near world-class speed. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, was was a lot. he made a bunch of money and, uh, and, and was living maybe too good of a life because he, you know, when he came back to play pool, he, he just didn't have it anymore. And, and he didn't realize he didn't have it. So, I mean, he blew, you know, a lot of cabbage. <laughs> so, <laughs> he bought several bologna sandwiches. Yeah. He, yeah. He made some pool players really happy. So, uh, I'll tell you what, he's, he's an honorable man, man. He, uh, uh, I know several people that he owed large figures to. And when, you know, when you get done playing after, because he was another guy. If you if you grab catch a cue together with him, you better be ready for 30, 35 hours. Yeah. Because me and him played that long twice, I think. And uh true. And but when you got done with him, he didn't pay you. You didn't even worry about it. You just met the next day and you got paid. End yeah. of discussion. There were no if he showed up. The only way that Jimmy Spears would have that was his name was Jimmy Spears. Everybody called it yeah. who fly boys. His name was Jimmy Spears. Um is that if, if he would have got killed in the car wreck and Mr. Lambert, yeah. you know, Lambert that owned the place was the same thing. The neat thing about this place we're talking about, guys, the pool room was an old bank and it truly had the, remember the vault, CJ? Yeah. Did it, yeah. Did the big old thing to get in or they did. Yeah. They had the big spinning wheel on it, Jimmy. You had to go around this dial like this for him to get in the, and you could put your money in the vault. A That's true right. bank vault. Yeah. Wow. Bomb proof. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that. Yeah, that went on for many, many years. I uh, I can't. Well, what CJ? Seven, eight, nine years. Yeah, yeah, that was that was something else, boy. And uh, so uh, Jimmy, uh, ask Jimmy Shannon something. Jimmy, Jimmy scares him. Get him a uh, get him a Mountain Dew. He needs a Mountain Dew or something. Yeah, I get him a shot of Mountain Dew, and, and and you know what he likes to do is take a shot of Geritol and chase it with that Mountain Dew. He says that gives him some kind of buzz. I'm not. I, I'm gonna call it a minute. I tell you what, and you're sitting beside, you're sitting beside the funniest man in all of pool. I'll, I'll book it right now. If you, I'm gonna call you out on a joker in a minute. And I'm bringing, <laughs> you talking about these, you talking about these Mountain Dews? You gonna love this? I drank Mountain regular Mountain Dews for oh god, probably twenty plus years. Yeah. All of a sudden, I quit. I just, just cold turkey. Boom. Quit. What, the Geritol or what? No, just the Mountain Dew Geritol. I'm still doing that. But, but check this out. About three or four days after quitting drinking Mountain Dew, yeah. my head felt like somebody run over it with a bulldog. Oh, yeah. Four months goes by. Here he comes. They said, man, I thought you drank Mountain Dews. I said, I did. I, I quit three or four months ago. He said, you ever drank the diet one? I said, no. Nah. I said, man, I don't even really like nothing diet. Yeah. He said, man, you got to try one. And he had some out there in, the, in, the, in his truck, in the cooler and all. Yeah. He, he run out there and grabbed me one, brought it back oh, in. Yeah. I've been drinking them ever since. Yeah. Yeah, he introduced me to that diet, man. I mean, I don't really drink sodas, but but he introduced me to that, man. I you know, I'm on a ratio of uh, but I, I they're really good. Diet Mountain Dew so, is really good. I got a yeah. our new sponsor. Uh <laughs> that, that'd be I hope you're out there watching because you know six hundred thousand uh, <laughs> is the limit. Hundred thousand. That's why they give you a hundred thousand dollars for showing a T ball anymore. Two point six million. I'll just have him give me a hundred thousand dollars worth of Mountain Dew and then and trade it in with Jimmy. Let him share it. Well, let Jimmy sell it. Let Jimmy sell it. Speak easy. We'll share the money. That's right. Retail it that way. Yeah. So yeah, that's 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 the new sponsor we're we're after, folks. Mountain Dew, Diet Mountain Dew. So yeah, so Morristown, man, everybody was there. Jack Cooney and I even played Earl Strickland beat him at a two or three hundred thousand, giving him a five and a break. Oh, yeah. that much. yeah, I remember that. 
I just couldn't oh, believe it. And you told do you do you want to mention the thing you told me earlier today? Which that one? I didn't know about about the break in Morristown. Oh uh, no, I don't think so. Well, I mean, it's over with it. They're dead now. He's dead. What what could it hurt? <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. And I made the nine in the bright morning human in the world in there. Yeah. Uh, what, I mean, it can't, it's up to you. It's up to you, but it, there's no way it can hurt. I don't well, think. And his wife know, shot him. His wife shot him. It can't, it can't be bad. Yeah, his wife shot him twice. Right in the heart. I was in, ba I was in Baton Rouge when she shot him one of those times, or maybe when she killed him. She, she shot, shot him, him once. Heart. He limped around for, for a while. And then, yeah. But, uh, you know, a lot of people probably haven't heard of, uh, you know, a, a juice table. And uh, that's what you're talking about, right? That's what you and I had yeah. a discussion about an yeah. hour ago. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of tricks, you know. And, and as we get through this, you know, I'll share some of them with you. I just got to protect some names to protect the innocent. We are. So, uh, yeah. but, but let's go. Let's, let's, have you ever been jarred? Speaking of some, because I can't, I, I feel like I need to warn some of these younger players out there because I can't. You better, and I'll be glad to warn them too. And especially, I can't imagine that that's not a different world now, too. And yes, it's still going on. Yes. Yeah, because uh, I, I have some firsthand experience with, with that. And uh, I, got it one time. I got it one time. I'm not sure what it was, but I think I know. Yeah, highest in scalp of mine. You know, they put it in your drink. and. and I Four shots yeah. of rice in a drink will get a guy where he can't walk. Yeah, you know, but they got the stuff. Blur you your vision. Well, I mean, that's just what I heard of years ago and stuff like that. But it'll send you to the bathroom too. But but so many bad things they do to people. But now in today's world, you know, I, I don't, even, I, I wouldn't even know where to go. I'm so far behind them, and, and I don't want to know about it. You know what I mean? Well, they got some stuff now that'll uh, make you. I mean, it puts you into a state that. Uh, and you don't, you feel so good that you don't even know what's happening. And, uh, you know, and I, I just, you know, I feel like it, I, I'm obligated to tell younger players, if you're playing for a lot of money, you got to watch those drinks. And, and here's the best way that uh, actually Jimmy told me, uh, drink a bottle of drink and keep it with you and leave the lid on it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, like, let's say you have a beer or a soft drink or something. If you could take a cellophane of a, of a cigarette pack and put that over, because here's what they can do. They can put this stuff in a hypodermic needle. They can cross their arms and they can shoot sure. that, that uh, stuff in your drink from 15 feet away. Well, like a damn so sure. Yeah. 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 I, I got you. Yeah. 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 Go yeah. <laughs> if it goes off in your own hand, you better not play for a few days. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, you know that's there again. I, I just this is this has got some educational elements, and 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 you know I was aware of it. Like when I was playing for big money, I would take my own cooler in and I, my own drinks, my own food, my own, and and the guy that was with me would guard it. I mean, it's a serious deal when you're playing for like big big money, and uh, so I just you know if, if people are out there that's that's gambling like that, I just I just want them to know that you really do need to watch your drinks, and women do too. I mean, I was in the nightclub business. And, you know, don't leave your drink and go to the bathroom and come back. I just, I'm telling you, I've seen it happen. I've talked to police officers that, that you know, wanted to, you know, when I was in the nightclub business, not that I would, you know, I didn't have anything, you know, they just wanted to warn me of it. And I actually put <clears throat> posters up in the women's bathroom and it, it outlined a uh, procedure, you know, and it's basically don't leave those drinks unattended. So, uh, that's enough about that. Moving on. <laughs> one, quick chat, one real fast shout out to it. Actually, it's the only employee I have right now because everybody else is a thief. But his name's Jerry Pearson. We call him Doc. And he was just on here. He said, Hey, dude, just wanted to give you a shout out. Shannon, one of the greatest pool players of all time. A great fan. Pretty damn good guy to work for. Thanks, big guy. See you in the AM Decline Shop. Doc, all right. he, he's a hell of a man, guys. I'm gonna tell y'all something. I've got a, I've got a good, got one good dude that works for me, and I've oh, been through true. several of them. And in yeah. my business, in my business, it's really tough to get somebody, you know, good yeah. solid person to work for you. Well, we appreciate men like that. This yeah. this world is you, you need to get one of them guards to come over there. The ones that got tangled up with that three card money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to have Black Larry or one of them guys. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I'd love to have one of them fellows here. Don't Black Larry, we called him the entertainer. Yeah, the entertainer, yeah. The, uh, he had a massive heart attack and stuff here a couple of years ago. Did he? Super Stoke told me. Yeah, yeah, he was. The Super uh, Strizz is what it is. You know him? Remember him? Yeah, of course. Super Strizz. He still drops in on my Facebook and puts a bunch of He's fire. He's all that crazy stuff. He puts all these there. weird things on there. I and love him to death. He's, out, he's stuck in California for some reason. I can't figure out why. Strizzing. Strizzing. <laughs> you know, they called him Super Stroke, and I'm going to tell this on him. He you couldn't know, make, a, he make a bridge that. even. He made huh? it horrible. Yeah, they, people thought because he hung around pool players that they called him Super Stroke because he had a super pool stroke. But that's not how he got the name. How he got the name was in L.A. at a pool room, he used to vacuum the uh, floors. Well, these guys be up all night, you know, trying to gamble. And he'd go out there and and uh, and, and he'd be taking these long strides. And, and I mean, he'd vacuum that thing up in like 10 minutes. He's about 6'4". Well, they started calling him Super Stroke because he had a super vacuum stroke. <laughs> so... I'm sure he doesn't mind me telling that. That that goes way back. He would laugh anyway. Frizzing. <laughs> the super stroke. Oh, let's talk about a friend of his. I don't know how much how much how good Jimmy knows him, but uh, let's talk about Jimmy Mattia for a second. Oh That's yeah, his best friends. Yeah, Mattia. Talk about a character. Man, he's one of the most colorful characters. I got lots of Jimmy Mattia stories. Me well, what's too. the best one? What do you got with for Jimmy? Uh, well, I'll trade I, you I, one. I, I can't tell that. I mean, I can definitely can't tell that. <laughs> I don't even I put him like you two, you two 30 years. I know him forever. I mean, yeah. what can, and when your name's Pretty Boy Floyd, and you, you were so happy, I mean, the guy was more handsome than Tom Cruise in the 70s. Yeah. I mean, what are you going to do? How are you going to top that? Hey, we uh, we it's went over there. The year I was born, 1972. I mean, yeah. hey, how can I, what can I say about PBF? He's just, he's the best. Hey, I love him. Hey, we went over to the world championships in Taiwan. Well, it was like a 17 hour flight. So we get up back then you could get up and go back and they had like, you know, these hot, you know, flight attendants. So there's like three of them. Well, we go back to see him with Jimmy Mattia, man, you know, and, and, and man, he goes back there and starts entertaining them and everything. And we stood back there. We drank every Budweiser on the whole plane. Oh, I, I don't Finally, know. They, we ordered one. They said, we don't have any more. And you're like, well, why? Because you guys drank all the Budweiser's. Can you, can you stop and land and get us some more? I guess, yeah. yeah. Well, we get to listen. We get to Taiwan, right? And so we go down, and Jimmy, we're all we're both messed up, but we slept a little bit. So, <laughs> Jimmy, we're like, let's go down and practice a little bit. We go down, and get a table. So I put my cue together, and I go up there, and Jimmy opens up his case, and I can see something's wrong. And I'm like, Jimmy, what is it? He said, Man, I forgot my cue. He <laughs> said I had it at my house at the table. He says I put the. He says I got in such a hurry, so I put my case. I forgot to put my cue in. He says, but just wait there. He says, I'm going to run back and get it. <laughs> he says, I'll be right back. I was like, Jimmy, he had to play with somebody else's cue in the world championship. Today. Man, I, mean, so I still talk to Jimmy some. He's in yeah, Vegas. He's I guess that's where that's probably where he needs to be. That's Jimmy. I mean, I can, I can just see Jimmy. That's where Jimmy needs to be. Yeah, his brother's um, a big gambler too, right? Yeah. His brother, he lost his brother, I think, about a year ago. Oh, did he? Okay. Yeah, I haven't yeah. talked to him in a while. He did my commentary when I did my TV events. He was my color commentary guy, and I couldn't have got a better guy. I mean, he, oh, he, was, no. he was the best at uh, yeah. the, the commentary. And, uh, yeah, that's somebody I wish I could talk to a little bit, man. We'll, <laughs> get done. we'll do a podcast. Us, we'll get all, all of us together with him. I can get all of yeah. it tonight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're going to do, you know, I'd love to get you back uh, and and we can, man, there's so many of us that went through those times. I wouldn't even touch the base yet. Jimmy, Jimmy, so he, have you gagged him or something? He ain't said a word. Oh, Jimmy? Yeah. <laughs> you never heard him, you've never seen him sit still so long and never tell a, uh, like, at least a joke. I mean, What's that on, joke you want him to tell? Jimmy, what? just tell us something, please. I mean, come on. What's the joke you want him to tell? I mean, I, uh, I have to call Marge. I'll get Marge out of bed if you want me to, Jimmy, and tell, make you tell a story. I mean, he told me some. I, mean, I swear to God, you just, you just cry. Hey, man, you know, uh, you know what the uh, number one reason for divorce is? Mm. Just, just take, just take three guesses. Joe Biden, money, and gambling. No, no, and no. 
Uh, you know what the answer is? No. Marriage. <laughs> it's about a hundred percent of the time, I think. <laughs> well, I'd like to pull you in one of them long ones, but which I don't know. Do we have a timer strain or anything like that? I mean, I'm the only one that's got to work tomorrow. You clowns can sleep all day. Yeah, no, we got plenty of time. You got what do you you got some? I got some. A joke, you said? What'd you say? No, you no, know? he's the one that's got the jokes. That's oh, right. Yeah. We ask out time because I swear to God, he's got some. If you get them on it, we'll probably be at the world top of YouTube by tomorrow morning. You know what reminds me? Uh, you know, you were one of the players that, that was on the team, Moscone Cup team, when we won in 96. You remember that very well? No, I forgot about it. You forgot? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've been on four teams and we won them all for some reason. All right, so uh, it's like it's like Keith McCready, man. I I wish he remembered one thing when we played, and he didn't remember, so I can't tell the story now. But it's kind of funny. It's like, man, of all the things to forget, why do you got to forget the thing that I remember the best? Keith wasn't ever on the Moscone Cup team, was he? No, no. But I was talking about when we gambled one time. Oh yeah. He remembered one that I didn't remember, and I remembered one that he didn't remember. So anyway, we'll call it a push. But uh, did you – were you around Keith very much? Uh, yeah, but, again, I miss it. He was East Coast. I mean, he was West Coast and I was East Coast. And we kind of missed each other. Definitely at our primes and stuff like that. But you know, I played Keith about well, – we played about five times, all the same way every time and all the same outcome every time. How did you guys play? He gave me the eight on the bar table. Oh, really? Yeah. You beat him? He didn't fare so well. He didn't fare so well? No, he finished second. You must have been, you know, 17, 18 the first yeah, time. Yeah. yeah, so he played you between 18 and like 22 or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a well, tough that time. I, mean, I had to stand in the offer out. I mean, but I got lucky, I guess. It's when I, I was a first, again, I'm not tooting my own horn, but when I won Danny Bobby's tournament up there, the Lexington All Star Up, and it had 256 players. And at that time, I think, I mean, I'm sure I'll get chats take, uh, checked here but uh i think i'm the only person ever to double dip matlock in the finals yeah i've been 11 10 11 4 or 5 in the finals i beat buddy hall johnny archer and jay swanson to get to matlock and then double dip matlock when i was i think 21. is that right mm -hmm. matlock was at that time considered the best bar table player in the world on the planet yeah probably yeah yeah i played him uh with Wade Crane uh, breaking for me. Did, did you know Wade at all? Uh, oh, very. God, I know Wade. Yeah, but not my papa. Yeah. What did you? Did you see? Did you see him when he was playing strong, or because you're, you know, the yeah, there's a little bit. I, of remember, I remember when he run when he run the uh, shot the one thousand on Buddy Hall at Resort's last call for nine ball. I've studied pulling my whole life. Yeah. Uh, CJ. I was younger then, but I remember every bit of that. And I watched. I actually played Wade. And guess who I played Wade with the first time? Guess who brought him to Somerset, Kentucky? Who's that? Danny Bolly. Oh, really? He gave me the six and a break, and we played about four hours, and he quit. Is that I right? I was two or three games winner, and he quit. I was getting older then. I was about 14. You gambled a lot with Danny Bailey back uh, in that time. I think you guys changed some – Maybe the money went one way a little more than the other, but <laughs> yeah, me, me and Danny, we got a lot of hours logged in together. I love Danny. I mean, I, I, I used guy. to play his girlfriend, and I used to give his girlfriend the five and a break, Penny. Oh and yeah, his, wife, his name was Penny. Her name was Penny. Yeah. I played Joe Blackburn. Joe, oh, there we go. There's one we need to talk about. Joe Blackburn, the greatest cue repairman of all times. <laughs> Yeah, he, 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 he put a tip on my cue last time I was in Bristol, Tennessee, just about eight months ago or so. That's as fine a man as I've ever met in my lifetime. And he did rock how good he plays. Yeah. He's 83 years old and he still runs out like he did when he was like, you know, 30 years ago. It's amazing. I'm going to bop him in the head. He robbed me when I was a kid, but I used to play his, his wife too. Her name, his name is, her name is Gwen. And yeah. we played, uh, Joe used to ride a Harley Davidson to the pool room in Somerset to play me and dad. And I'm talking right? 1980, 81, two, three. And yeah. at Bobby Johnson's pool room. I'm sure you went to Bobby Johnson's pool room. He locked me and him in his pool room one night, and I played him with nobody. I love that. If I ever played the owner of a pool room and they locked the door, 
And because he's a really good player, you remember. You're damn right, he was a good player. And I was like 19 or something, but I mean, I was really starting to catch on. And uh, Bobby I really helped beat me, but I mean, it was, it was tough yeah. action for me, huh? Bobby really, really helped. You know, that's just one of the saddest stories I ever heard about him and his whole family. What happened to him, his wife, his son, they all died within a year and a half. Is that right? It's crazy. Bobby Johnson never, and he. Give everybody a background on Bobby Johnson here. Years ago, the first tournament I went to was called the Maverick Club. Monroe Brock had it. It was named after the Clyde Childers because Clyde Childers got murdered. Yeah. You know, when Clyde didn't get murdered. He ran into the back of a tobacco truck at exit 87. That's where Bobby Johnson's pool room was at. So Bobby, right before Monroe Brock, would have the Clyde Childers tournament, would have a warm-up tournament at BJ's Family Beards, exit 87, Richmond, Kentucky. And... Uh, Man, the stuff that just it went on there it was just un- just unbelievable. But Bobby taught me so much. Besides my father, I would say Bobby tried to help me as much as anybody in the world did. But about probably been, I don't know the time frame, eight or ten years ago now. Keith caught cancer, his son. He caught cancer. Bobby Johnson never took a drink of alcohol in his entire life and died of uh, uh, cirrhosis of the liver. He retired from IBM. Then he ran the pool room for 30 years. He had 30 years at IBM and ran the pool room for 30 years. And uh, got done with that. And Keith caught cancer. Bobby died of cirrhosis of the liver. Then Keith died about six months later. And Miss Johnson, Miss Georgia died six months after that. The whole family disappeared in 18 months. Man, that's brutal. Unbelievable. You you mentioned Monroe Brock. That's another legendary steak horse. He 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 staked Earl for a number of years. So I know you've had a lot of uh, encounters with with Monroe, right? I've got the worst story you ever heard about it, my and unbelievable. <clears throat> yeah, Monroe ended up. Am I echoing that. you all? I'm echoing to myself a little bit. Yeah, yeah just a little bit. Just uh, let me scoot back a little bit. Yeah. But anyway. Monroe Brock staked Earl for all those years and Buddy over at the Maverick Club. Yeah. And uh, Dad was going to buy me a pool table. Well, he had Earl's pool table that was coming out of the Maverick Club. My dad bought it. It was at Monroe's house there in in, uh, Richmond. We go over there and buy the table, get it loaded up, put on the rider cup, bring it the rider truck, bring it home and all that stuff right there. About six months after that, they blowed my, somebody murdered Monroe, shot him out of the tree in his house, yeah, through the throat with an explosive handmade bullet. Nothing was ever found about it, and the only thing they ever found out was a set of footprints leading to I seventy five. Now yeah. I'm friends today with Monroe's son, Monty Brock, and. Uh, you know, I was at Burl. I was at Burl Gabbard's house when the FBI came there asking him about that. Yeah, Burl of it. Yeah, accused Burl of it. Yeah, yeah, because you know him and Burl had some trouble before that. And uh, I was at Burl's house, and the FBI came, knocked on the door, and they had Monroe you know, pistol with him. Monroe pistol with yeah. Burl. Yeah, so they were down there seeing because Burl, you know, uh, they were questioning him, and and uh, Burl, Burl, was like, the FBI's at the door, and I said. I ran back and hid in the bathroom in the bat in his bedroom. I was like, I don't want to see the FBI. <laughs> so, There's another one gone. Poor Burl got killed. And Burl, that's why these guys get killed? You know what I mean? Yeah, Burl. Uh, you know, you and I both knew him really well. I mean, he was uh, he was a character. He steered me around Kentucky when I was like 21, and I mean, I'm I would give him 20 percent, and I won probably 30 thousand around there, and I'd bring him back his 20 percent. He loved me because I was honest. You know, I'd blend. 2000 or you know give him his 400 and 5000 and remember Cheney? Was, you remember Cheney? 50,000 miles 50,000 miles in the back of an 88 old cutlass with Susie driving Burl shotgun and me and the dog Argo in the back seat I slept 50,000 miles with Argo the pug in the back seat Not Susie was a character too <laughs> yeah. Big Sue he called her Big Sue yeah yeah, he had the Knoxville uh, Billiard Club, right? Maybe uh, see, he opened Knoxville Billiard Club, which is still open today. Yeah. The, by the way, I'm going to give a plug to Knoxville Billiard Club. 
best cheeseburger in the state of Tennessee. I'll guarantee it right now. The little yeah. bill right there you go in there. The food's unbelievable. I oh, eat it's, 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 nice. it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Billy Gray, right? Owns yeah. the place. Yeah. Well, Billy yeah, Gray, yeah, Bill Gray Jr. owns it now. Yeah, he. Uh, hey, man, I eat one of those cheeseburgers every time I go there. It's it's it, he's you're you're right spot on, man. They're 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 incredible on that flat grill. Just you like, know, we don't like at no place that they can holler any place you want to go. They don't get no better than KBC. Yeah, yeah. Hold and on, my cat. Sure. Out. I'm taking two second time out. My cat's mad at me. Your cat's mad. Hi, right, Jimmy. <laughs> We, we we wore him out. <laughs> he's got he's yeah, he's using the old cat excuse. <laughs> no, I didn't either. I thought I guess she just want me to play with her. She come in, usual boy. She meow. She'll tear your feet up if you don't let her out. <laughs> Jimmy, talk to us. Let's tell some Sanford stories. We got a lot of good Sanford yeah. stories, brother. Yeah. Tell something on Mars or something about our pool tournaments. Me and Jimmy is run. What we run? Uh, 30 tournaments together, Jimmy? At least. At least 30 or 40? Yep. My favorite stop, I'll go ahead and make that. Well, I had two favorite stops. One of them's God bless his heart. Was Michael's Beards and Simpson in Fairfield, Ohio, and Jimmy Bowles' place in Sanford, North Carolina. That's always my favorite stops on the whole tour that we went to all year long. We just lost Michael last year. Just incredibly sad. But, uh, Man, you, you two guys are just awesome. But man, dude, man, you've had some hellacious times, and you got nothing to say. At least say that I, I farted or done something, played too much music or something. <laughs> say something wrong. I mean, God, I mean, God Almighty, say something. You ought to see this guy one night. Well, I think it was one of the very first tournaments. That just something about Mars right right back and hit me in the head with a beer bottle or just say something. <laughs> Yeah, this rascal, he's sitting at a table. He got the tournament board out there. And I don't know, it's like 80 people playing. Yeah. You, you got to imagine. I mean, we had a house full. We had a house full it's every packed, time. It's, it's packed from stem to stern. He got this big tournament sheet out there in front of him, and everybody's asking him questions 90 miles an hour. And this guy right here is hungry as a hostage. <laughs> I mean, he's about to starve. <laughs> I come walking by the table. He's over on the other side of it. And he hollers at me. Right, I'm wide open too, picking up trash, throwing it in the trash. He's getting money on the poker machines. He's getting money on the poker machines. What he's doing? <laughs> he hollers at me. Said, "Hey man, uh, you about ready? To, you about ready to get something to eat?" I said, "No, man, I'm good. I just eat tomorrow." See, soap. tomorrow soap. I know what's coming out. <laughs> I still say it to this day. I tell I say it all the time on the phone show. Man, he told me that story. So Shannon, Shannon, Shannon was so just like a deer in the headlights. He was like, <laughs> he wasn't so sure that he heard what he heard. You know what yeah. I mean? He's trying to process it. Yeah. You know, the guy we was just talking about a minute ago, Doc, my guy works for me, my manager. I get him all the time. He said, dude, I'm starving to death. You ever going to eat some hell far? I ate a half more soap this morning. I'm good to go. <laughs> he, he don't really know. He don't understand that. But, it, boy, it goes back to a lot of things. I never will forget. I, I lied to my guts hurt over there right there. Man, I'm glad you've had fun with that for years now. Oh, so, you've got, uh, no, we can have a lot more fun if we can get you started here. <laughs> So what did Shannon do to get uh, – what did you say you got hit in the back of the head with a, with a bottle or something? Do what? <laughs> I, no, did I hear just, that right? Yeah, he just shoot the bullet. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, oh, that sounds like a juicy one there, but uh, the bar of soap. Uh, <laughs> oh, I've never uh, seen him, not one fight Jimmy Bulls has pulled in there, and, and I run pool in tournaments there 15 years. Never seen – not even many arguments. It's just that yeah. kind of place. That's that's how classy that man is sitting beside you, and what a good place he runs. Really man, is. I've been here for like five or six weeks, and I mean, every day is like a an, an adventure. I mean, there's something funny going on here all the time. But it's a smooth a adventure. Time. It's like walking through the rainforest. It's smooth. Yeah, I mean, there's such a great group of people here. They play ring yeah. games every day, and they yeah. cut up, and they, I mean, they're they're you know they're playing for money and and having a good time doing it. You know, it's yeah. it's cool to see. You know, I'd like to see more pool rooms like this, and it's beautiful too here. I mean, uh, the I mean the decor, and I mean he he collects. You've seen his collection. Well, he's got some bonuses a lot of people don't know about stuff like you and I talked about today. That's just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. 
Don't worry about that. Don't ask Jamie. They won't sweat you. Know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, they don't care nothing about Sanford, North Carolina. <laughs> But yeah, I'm, uh, you know, I'm doing a, a TV show here and I got a film crew coming in on Sunday. We just talked to uh, my partner, who's uh, the executive producer, and we're bringing in a crew. And I mean, we're going to do some some cool stuff. And uh, I told Shannon earlier, I, I said, you know, we're uh, I think we're going to get a movie deal at some point. And Shannon, I, I mean, I definitely got you on the top of the list of uh, somebody because see, I want to do a pool movie that's based on real stories, you know, and uh, nothing against that's the all about, That's what all the big stuff's about anymore. It's reality. Everything's yeah. reality anymore. Yeah. We got, we're close to a couple uh, big producers out in Hollywood and, and, you know, uh, the people that's behind me really think that we can get something going. So uh, we're, we're doing a, like a five to seven minute like trailer for a, a, a TV show that we're going to try to do. And, and uh, so there's a lot of things going on in the pool world. And, uh, you know, my my niche in the market is, you know, the, this day that the days we're talking about aren't here anymore with the cell phone. Like back, Shannon, you know, if the cell phone had existed, we wouldn't have got half the action or even 20 percent of what we got. No, 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 no. Once I get a picture of you and oh, man, yeah, yeah. the cell phone's still pool. And so on that. Yeah. So but I want to I just want to recap and, and document some of these uh stories and like i said i think we can bring it to the big screen and uh, and do something really special you know they've been talking about pool movies for a long time but i mean we got the real deal because we you've got between me and you we've got enough stories to make three movies but uh well you know we're gonna we're gonna work towards that and this place is where i'm gonna uh home base it because uh it's perfect you know i got people coming in i had a guy uh, today, drive in three and a half hours to take a lesson. And uh, Jimmy saw that. I mean, how was that? Did that guy love it or what? <laughs> well, something's blowing my mind right now. And I'm looking at it right now. Uh, I'm looking at my watch and my phone and the way it's going off and stuff like that. And by the way, guys, all y'all on the side talk, we're going to get to you in just a second. But uh need to look at this, uh, people chiming in. And I've got my, so many, my phone's blowing up. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go. We'll go. I, I had, I saw somebody talking about Gary Spade. I'll give us another half hour if everybody wants to. Be done yeah, we'll, we'll stretch. You know, like we're that. about it, but we're gonna, we're gonna stretch this because we're, we're on a roll. We're in stroke. And uh, did I just you know, they talk about Gary Spade? Somebody wanted to talk about Gary Spade. Well, let's uh, say anything you want to. One of my best friends. Yeah, I played him at his home pool room there, and and I'm sure you played him a few times. You playing bank pool or uh, no? Nah, I'm smarter or... than that. Yeah, he played. I great. Consider him. In my opinion, probably in my honest opinion, the greatest bank pool player ever lived. Yeah, he was something else. His dad played really. Joey, when did Joey? Yeah, Joey. My dad played Joey a lot, but uh, yeah. Gary was Gary was a phenomenon. And uh, that's who taught John Brumback. That's who John Brumback learned how to play bank pool from was Gary. See, I, I watched when I went he up there to play. He didn't learn it from him, but he, he refined it from him. And Gary was his uh, mentor growing up. Bugs yeah. lived in Chicago and stuff like that. And Bugs was a little older than Gary. But, you know, I played them all. I grew up playing them all. I, even though I was young, let me tell you something. When Gary Spath played great bank pool, just take you a seat. Yeah, yeah. He, he run out playing bank pool like most people did playing nine ball. Yeah, yeah. He was an incredible. Uh, he was incredible you know. to watch. His damn nine ball game. CJ played nine ball. I'm gonna say, but he might even he probably played better than me. Played between me and you. You was always oh. a, you was a step above me. I don't care a bit. You was a step above me playing nine ball. I well, when like I was a step up. above you playing one pocket in bank pool, but Gary was a Gary was a phenomenon. Well, when I, I went up there to play him on his home court and I watched him warm up and it was apparent to me real quick that he was never going to miss a ball and he was never going to make a position error. So right. I'm sitting over there and I got to play the guy right. and I'm thinking to myself, how am I going to beat him? And, you know, he had that big stroke, you know, and he had a lot of arm movement. Yeah. So I watched I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to give myself some confidence. And I watched that arm for a little while and it came to me. I'm like, I'm going to wear his arm out. So that was my strategy. I'm going to play him till his arm wears out. And, I mean, he stayed ahead of me like three or four games, three or four games. We played and played and played. And after about nine hours, he brought that cue back, and I saw it. It misfired a little bit, and he hung a ball, and I caught wind and, and, and ended up beating him the set. 
play well, a I nine didn't ball play better than him necessarily. I just had I was more compact and I could play for thirty hours. The guy was had one bucket main pull that a level that oh I couldn't play. Yeah, yeah, yeah no way. Seen before he, he played that good. It, it was he beat Buddy Hall there playing nine ball uh, gambling. You know, I mean, he might have got the last two or something, but I mean, he he was that caliber player. Somebody good. else, uh, let me see, was talking about Scotty Townsend. Wow, you knew Scotty pretty well, didn't you? Or just did you? thirty-five years old? So. Yeah, I mean, I pretty much know that. But uh, what, you got any Scotty Townsend stories? What, Bruce? what do you want to know? For y'all want to know about fights or playing? Somebody blue said. Or what do you somebody, know, said uh, somebody somebody asked if we'd ever had a drinking contest with him, which I would just for I would just, no, I would forfeit that. And I can I like to drink beer myself, but now yeah. you don't do that. You don't fight guys with Scotty. You don't play 60 ahead with Scotty. Uh, you probably don't want to fight Scotty. And just be friends with Scotty. That's why just, let's just all hang out and eat. Let's hang out and eat uh, uh, lobster tails and stuff. Yeah. He was freakishly strong. <clears throat> Somebody said he bet a fifth of whiskey one time and he like bench pressed a car up. Like, Did you ever say that? off the ground for a fifth of whiskey. <laughs> He liked to broke my hand one time shaking it. I beat him in the finals at JLB's down there one time. He said, thank you, young man. And, you know, Scott, he was always so polite. I swear to God, I think he broke three or four fingers of my knuckles. And, and being nice to him about it, but it was just his – that was just Scotty. He was tough, you know what I mean? He yeah. wore that gator tooth around. and he, That gator's tooth he wore on his necklace, him and his son caught it in his front yard and pulled it and killed the gator and took it out of his front tooth. That's Scotty. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I heard he used to really uh, wrestle alligators, and uh, he was, you know, he's one of those Cajun tough guys from uh, Scotty Townsend was a different breed. I know Scotty a lot different than most people did. Uh, the ninety nine percent of most people did. Uh, Scotty Townsend was an incredible man. I used to run into him a lot, and uh, I, I gambled against him. And I've in Vegas we teamed up, and uh, and uh, he beat all these bar table players out there when I was. We were partying a little bit, you know, and I couldn't keep up with him. So he I played the last there. two below God on the bar table. Yeah, it's high speed. It's how good he played. Incredible. But uh, it was it was fun, you know. There was a group of us that <clears throat> we'd go around those tournaments, and we were road players, but we'd congregate in those tournaments, and we'd we'd usually match up with each other and play for twenty hours. We'd play through the whole tournament if we could, <laughs> right? So, uh, but uh, anyway, never, least, there's there's one I never seen. I never seen nobody make him quit. I never seen Scotty say he couldn't play no longer than I'm done. Yeah. He's the only player I ever seen do that. That I never once saw him quit. Rick I mean, Wade on the nine nine days. Days. He can play Rick nine Wade. Days. Yeah, he was a great endurance player. Rick Wade says, uh, what's your third best story of Charlie Brinson, Shannon? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Third? No. <laughs> I'll just put it like this. I got a lot of respect for Charlie. What hurt me about Charlie Branson, I'll tell you, and, and this probably happened at Jimmy Bowles' pool room. At the end there, Charlie would come over there. When he Remember when he was with Martha, Jimmy? He would bring Martha over there. And a lot of times, Charlie was short on money and stuff like that. We'd chip in to put him in the tournament, wouldn't we, Jimmy? He said, Shannon, he said, I'd play a lot better if I had me some of that uh, uh, French vanilla coffee. I'd give $5 for him and Martha to go get French vanilla coffee. And they come back and he played and just do his best. I mean, I got nothing to say good, but good things about Charlie Branson. He was yeah. a, he's yeah, a legend he's of right. the South. Let's put it like that. Yeah. I ran into him all kinds of different places. Yeah, he was a character, that's for sure. A legend of the yeah. South. And his cats. What about Martha's cats? You remember that, Jimmy? Yeah. How many cats did she have? She had several. And then when she passed away, one or two got killed. And it was awful, man. I mean, it, this, Charlie, it, it, it was sad to watch it go away. She died. A cat would get killed. Charlie would tell us about it. Another cat would get killed. And then all of a sudden, he went. It was, it, it was the damnest thing you ever seen. I know it. To a lot of people, that don't mean nothing, but if you watch it unfold, it was heartbreaking. Yeah. Which I'm a big softy anyway. Let me see here. Uh, straight back. Thanks, straight. Hello from Alabama. Where is Kentucky Cannon from? Somerset. Whoever said that? 
The beard, I never knew the beard. Did you know him from Chicago? The bank pool player? Sure, yeah. yeah, you know him. Freddie ba Freddie Baker Wagner. You met Freddie numerous times at the Derby. I never went to the Derby though, so no. Freddie Baker is a very good friend of mine. Yeah, he used to the name, but I don't. At the All Star Open, we was talking about Danny Bowie's tournament. That's where I first met Freddie Ben Yeah, okay. His, his daughter's still on Facebook. Freddie was a great friend of mine and another mentor. He wasn't just a friend; he was a mentor. Yeah, he was known for his bank pool and yeah. put out a video on it and everything. He's the one who had the shirt. CJ said, "Bank on, brother." I know yeah. you see him. Yeah. Said, yeah. "Bank on, brother." Me and John won for a long, long time. Tom from Glasgow. Hey, Tom Shaw. You're from Glasgow, Kentucky. Billy Pay. Billy Pay just died in Vernon Elliott. Billy Pay was one eyed player from uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Top notch player. Did you know one eyed one eyed Tony was probably before your time, wasn't he? I know one eyed Tony. I met him again. That was right around Clyde Children's time. Yeah. He's from Kentucky yeah. also. Burl used to tell me that he was an incredible shot maker, and uh, he was, yeah. He cut the paint off the balls and everything. Like Clyde, he played like. Did you know Clyde Childers, or was that the right touch for you? Yeah, that was Clyde, a little bit for me. Clyde ran into the back of a tobacco truck right there at Bobby Johnson's Puller Max in '87. Like I was telling you about, they said he was the best money player of in Kentucky in that time period. Yeah. I think Danny and them were waiting for him for breakfast and he didn't show up. And uh, they said he, he went off the road or something and uh, hit a semi. What'd you say? Hit a tobacco truck? Or? Yeah, running into a backup truck in the back of it and harpooned himself. Oh, man. Yeah. You know, he was legendary. They had that child, uh, Clyde Childress Memorial Tournament for many years, which was an incredible tournament. After Clyde. But Clyde and One Eyed Tony was a big rivals back then. And Bobby Johnson who worked at IBM, was right there with them. But Bobby was the only working guy. Yeah. Yeah, they were, uh, they were legendary. Did they uh, – was that Clyde Childress Memorial at, at Monroe Brock's place? Was that in Richmond or was that somewhere at else? At the Maverick Club, actually, in 87, yeah, yeah. In, between, in between Richmond and Irvin. And yeah. it's, it's rough as it <laughs> – did you know Cheney there? Speaking of Irvin, wasn't he? Mike Cheney. I don't yeah. know Mike Cheney well. I, I'm, yeah, not sure on the I, I'm not for sure if Mike's still alive, but me and Mike Cheney's played a lot of pool together. And you were talking about one earlier, Jack Cooney done very, 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 very well there back in the 70s. Yeah. You know, Cheney would play anybody. I went in there with this really good looking girl, and I'd been getting knocked around Kentucky. As a matter of fact, in Danny Biley's place, I'm playing a guy. And the, and the phone, you know, they had pay phones back then. And the phone rang and the guy was the guy I was playing was called up to the phone. And he when he came back, Danny said, I, I told him, I said, uh, I said, do you want to finish this game or do you want to quit now? <laughs> and so he, he you know, I got knocked, right? So I went Dude. and played Cheney, huh? You got knocked with Mike Cheney? No, no, I got knocked at Danny's place. I was playing somebody and the phone rang. And I knew I got knocked. So when the guy came back, I asked him, I said, you want to finish this game or do you want to quit now? Because I knew I'd been knocked, right? Oh, you got so phone knocked. Yeah, you so I go down to Cheney's. I go down to Cheney. I start out playing him for 10 a game. He doesn't know who I am. I'm with this really good looking girl and I'm and I'm playing for 10 a game and then I'm letting him hustle me. We're bet 20, we bet 50, we bet 100. I'm betting everybody on the side. Well, I beat him out over 6,000 on that four by eight table where you had to put the little cloth on to, to break the balls. So anyway, so I went over 6,000. Now we're going out the door and there's a pay phone right there. So we're, we're going out the door and, uh, and right as we get close, the phone rang. So I told the girl, I said, hold on just a second. I went over there and answered and I said, you're too late and hung up. <laughs> <laughs> The, and the reason that they were knocking me, they couldn't identify me because I changed my looks a lot. But the girl, she was the one that they, they would describe her. And then they put it together because, you know, this this good pool player going around with this good looking girl. So anyway, but they were too late that time. But anyway, Shannon, man, this has been a ball. And uh, and uh, I think we're going to wrap it up. And, and we certainly got we do this all day long. So uh, I'd really like to invite you back. And uh, Jimmy, I know Jimmy's a little quiet this time. We're going to give him another shot of Geritol next time. Well, I don't know what happened. Maybe he didn't have his diet Mountain Dew or whatever. Maybe me and you talk too much. But I think he's enjoying. I mean, you know, we. That's what, we, it, is. That's <laughs> what it is. I'm about 30 Mountain Dew short today. <laughs> yeah. 
we're working on that sponsorship though. If anybody's with Diet Mountain Dew out there, you know, we 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 got a place where you can showcase your product and uh, they can be uh they can be in the movie that we're going to do one of these days, Shannon, cuz I definitely want you to be, you know, like you said, uh, you know, we've done a lot in pool and it'd be really cool to uh, especially for your little girl. Give your little girl a plug. I mean, I know you're a proud I want daddy. to get her out, I want to get her around here but the time we got on her Today was her first day in first grade, and she was already exhausted, guys. She was she was out. I, Daddy got home, brought a roast beef sandwich night, and her and mommy went upstairs and got a shower, and they're gone. You know what I mean? Yeah. Man, that's well, awesome. I think one thing I'd like to give a shout-out to is all the viewers we had tonight, man. Thank yeah. you all for that very much and stuff. It was awesome. Yeah, I appreciate it. And, uh, and you know, if, you, if you're if uh, you a member of my webs or my uh, YouTube channel, I appreciate it. But but make sure that you go there and hit that little bell to get the notification. Everybody, please go on there and give me a like. CJ's trying to do something big for pool, guys. Let's get it off the ground. Let's do the best we can possibly do. Do everything we can possibly do. Yeah, I appreciate that, Shannon. And if anybody do, wants to, you know, I do. Us three together has got almost 100 years in friendship. Now, y'all stop and think about that. Yeah. Us three together has got close it's to 100 that, years man. in friendship. It's more than that. Hell, I'm 102. Oh, well. <laughs> I told him he didn't look a day over 85. I mean, you know, I think it's very tall Mountain Dew. It's, we got a combination there that might be the fountain of youth. We weren't trying to shut you out, Jim. We were trying to be, you know, halfway be nice, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyway, folks, I appreciate you joining us. And Shannon, man, great. Uh, man, it's awesome to talk with you again. It's been a little while. Too long. Man. We got a long time, up. guys. I hope I didn't embarrass y'all. And glad to put you two together. I know you're good no friends. Way you could embarrass us. Yeah, you can't embarrass us. But we, we, mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we, we well, look at him. He's like, don't challenge him now. Wait, 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 wait. Challenge man, when he, when he, what's going to be thrown back now? Come on out. That, let's let's save that for a later episode. We'll we'll save that for the next one, you know, yes. so people have something to look forward we to. We're gonna let Shannon try to figure out a way to embarrass Jimmy and I. And, well, uh, I can, that, that, the only thing I can possibly say is uh, it's been a lot of fun, and it, actually, it's been an honor to be around you guys. Thank y'all. All right, man. Shannon, love you, man. Yeah, we'll talk with you soon, and everybody. Uh, we and look forward to said, you I, I love both of you guys too. Love you, Jimmy. Right. Love you, CJ. All right, Shannon, man. Likewise. You'll have a good right. evening. The game is the teacher, guys. CJWiley.com if you want to know more about how to play like the pros play. Follow the best.